Hello and welcome. Although actually what I should be saying is hola y bienvenido because we are mixing things up. We're not bringing you a car review today. No, we have swapped our normal location for this beautiful racetrack here in sunny Valencia. Now this week it is testing ahead of season eight of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, the electric street racing series that travels to some of the world's most iconic cities. Now, if you are new to the series, where have you been? Um, if you are a fan, welcome back, but we're gonna tell you everything you need to know to get you up to speed with this season. Now, Formula One may have been the pinnacle of motorsport for decades, but now that we're all switching to driving electric cars, something had to change. So Formula E was born back in 2014 and now exists as a testbed for race to road technology in our electric cars. So if you're driving something like a Nissan Leaf or a BMW i3 or a Porsche Taycan, then you're currently probably enjoying some of the tech evolution discovered at racetracks like this. Formula E cars are built from the ground up as fully electric race cars. Where a Formula One car has an engine, fuel tank and hybrid system under its bodywork, a Formula E car has a battery pack, transmission and electric motor. All Formula E cars use a standard chassis and a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack. The teams can design their own powertrain, which includes the motor and transmission and rear suspension, but they must use the supplied chassis and battery. In normal race mode, the Formula E race car generates around 270 brake horsepower. One of the many unique features of this all-electric racing championship include attack mode and fan boost. Attack mode gives drivers a temporary power boost, an extra 31 brake horsepower to help them power past the cars ahead. To activate attack mode, the drivers need to arm their car by driving through an activation zone which is off the racing line marked on the track. Fan Boost is voted for by viewers following the race on social media and gives five drivers a five second burst of extra power in the second half of every race. So what's new in season eight? Well, quite a lot actually. Now I am no fortune teller, but what I can tell you is that 2022 looks set to deliver another amazing season of wheel to wheel racing. There are 16 rounds on the season eight calendar with the action getting underway at the now traditional season opening doubleheader in Saudi Arabia. We'll be visiting eight locations around the world, including London on the 30th and 31st of July, around and inside the Excel Center in the Docklands. We've also got three new races for season eight, the Jakarta E-Prix in Indonesia, the Vancouver E-Prix in Canada, and a new season finale around the streets of Seoul in South Korea. But as with all sporting calendars, this is all dependent on you know what. So keep an eye on electrifying.com and the Formula E site for the latest event updates. As for the runners and riders, we have 11 teams gunning for the manufacturer's title in season eight. Audi is no longer a factory team in Formula E, but is set to continue its involvement by supplying the powertrain and expertise to the Envision team. BMW has also opted out of being a manufacturer team in 2022, but will remain as powertrain supplier to the newly rebranded Avalanche Andretti team. And Andretti isn't the only team set to keep us commentators on our toes. Envision Virgin Racing becomes Envision Racing following a change in ownership, while Jaguar Racing becomes Jaguar TCS Racing thanks to a new title sponsor. We've also got 22 drivers hoping to emulate season seven champion Nick de Vries. The Flying Dutchman returns to drive for Mercedes in the German brands last year in the championship, alongside teammate Stoffel van Dorn. Season three champion Lucas de Grassi makes the move from Audi to Venturi, while Max Gunter goes from Andretti Autosport to Nissan Edams, replacing the departing Oliver Rowland. Now, from the other side of the pond, Formula E has its first full-time American racing driver. Oliver Askew is stepping into the Avalanche Andretti team. Now, he made a real impression with the boss, Michael Andretti, in 2019, when he won the Indy Lights Championship for them. A big name with a big following joins Formula E this season. Fresh from Formula One and driving for Alfa Romeo, it's Antonio Giovinazzi joining the Dragon Pensi Autosport team. 
joining the Chinese outfit Neo 333 is young 22-year-old British racing driver Dan Tictum, having just completed two seasons in Formula 2. So what actually happens at testing? Well, over a couple of days, there are five sessions. Five to 6,000 laps will be completed by the 22 drivers and 11 teams. And well, it's called testing for a reason. They really do test everything, every component, every part, the software, the hardware, the regen, the tire pressure. We'll also do simulations for the race and the qualifying. So there really is a lot to achieve. These guys have an absolutely jam-packed schedule. So now you are up to speed with all things Formula E ahead of its season eight. Have you enjoyed this video? A bit different, but do let us know in the comments below if perhaps you're already a fan of Formula E. Maybe you are new to the sport. We would love to hear your thoughts. And in the meantime, as always, subscribe to our channel, electrifying.com. And remember, the first race of this season will kick off at the end of January 28th and 29th in Saudi Arabia.